I was reading this, and, and I gotta be honest, I was reading this for a few weeks because I read this a few weeks ago, and it was this one part of the scripture that literally slapped me in my face. And I had to stop, and I promise you, I had to sit there for a good five minutes. Probably felt like a good 20 minutes. Um, but, but I wanna show you something in this text because Jesus is telling them to be alert and to be in prayer. He tells them what to do. He goes away. He comes back and he finds them asleep. Yeah. And when I read this one particular part of the verse, it revealed to us the challenge is not that they couldn't stay alert or be in prayer, not that they hadn't been taught how to be alert and be in prayer because they had been around Jesus all this time. Yeah. The yeah. problem was they lacked the discipline to do it. Yeah. And so what he shows us in order to really keep our guard up, one of the things we have to develop is discipline. Somebody say discipline. It's right here. He said, he came back, he found them sound asleep. He said to Peter, he said to Peter, he said to Peter, Simon, you went to sleep on me? Can't you stick it out with me a single hour? Can't you stay alert? Be in prayer so you don't enter into the danger zone or temptation without even knowing it? Don't be naive. This is the part. He says, part of you is eager, ready for anything in God. Part of you is about it. You, you passionate. You ready for all the action. But there's another part of you that is lazy as an old dog sleeping by the fire. I read that part. I'm not going to lie to y'all. It hit me in the face. I felt like I was staring myself in the mirror because that's what the Bible is supposed to do. It's supposed to, it's supposed to make us right. It's supposed to get us together. And it revealed to me the problem is not that we don't know how to be alert or to watch or be prayerful. The problem is that we lack the discipline to do it. And so in order to be alert and to be prayer, in order to, to actively do those things on a continual basis, we have to have discipline. Somebody say discipline. Now, we got to watch what's happening in the text because when Jesus comes back and he sees that, that the big three, now again, the big three, that was like Jesus' favorite students. Now, they tell you as teachers, you're not supposed to have favorite students, but every teacher got favorite students. I don't care what nobody say. I'm an educator. I got favorite students. There's just certain people that you connect with and that just get things, you know, a lot faster than some of the other students. There's no knock to, to anybody. But, but he comes back and he sees the big three, they're sleeping. And the person that he calls out is Peter. But notice what he calls Peter. He didn't call Peter, Peter, he calls him Simon. Now, just a brief Sunday school lesson, Simon and Peter are the same person. It's like your first name and your middle name. It's like Maurice and Bruce, it's the same person. But depending on what's needed, or depending on who's trying to get your attention, they may call you certain things. My wife doesn't call me Maurice unless she's frustrated about something. Most of the time, she'll call me Mo, Bay, or Bruce. And if she's saying Bruce, that means I need to come right away. If she's saying Maurice, that means I need to take a step back. All right? So Simon and Peter are the same person. 
Same person, they're the same person. Simon's name was changed to Peter by Jesus. Jesus gave Simon the name Peter. Simon was the name he was given at birth. And Simon represents a man who had not been transformed by the presence in the person of Jesus. Simon was passionate, but he lacked discipline. Simon was impulsive. He said, I'll never deny you. But a few chapters later, we see what he's doing, denying Jesus. Peter represents his name that was given by Jesus. And Peter represents a faith-filled, solid lover and follower of Jesus Christ. Peter represents the passionate Simon that has been trained and disciplined to follow and represent the kingdom of God. Peter, is that means that he is now stable. In other words, he has been developed in some way. And so to call him Simon is to speak to the undisciplined, the undeveloped part of him. And so when he goes and he sees them boys sleeping, he don't say Peter, he says, nah, Simon, because so what you're doing right now shows a lack of discipline. It shows a lack of training. It shows that you're not fully yet prepared to do what it is that I've called you to do. So I can't call you Peter right now. I got to call you Simon. And one of the challenges with our generation is that we are a real passionate group. We got all the passion in the world. We know how to make it happen. We know how to make it look good. We know how to make it feel good. We know how to make it sound good. We know how to get that business up off the ground in 30 days or less. We know how to make things happen because we are a passionate group of people. We got passion. We got passion for money. We got passion for clothes. We got passion for relationships. We got passions for looking good, for feeling good. But the problem with our generation is that we lack the discipline. And there's a big big difference between passion and discipline because when you're passionate and you lack the discipline what happens is you'll begin to build something and all of a sudden you'll get to an obstacle you'll face a roadblock and that passion begins to die off and because you don't got discipline you'll either turn around or what you've built up will begin to fall down this is why we see so many young people jump into marriages because they're passionate about the idea not of marriage they're passionate about a wedding something they can post on the internet, something they can share with their friends, something they can get likes for, not realizing that it takes discipline to make a marriage work, that it takes discipline to make a relationship work. And so the moment you find yourself facing a roadblock, you're facing a challenge because your passion has faded and you don't have any discipline, you say, nah, I think I want a divorce. Nah, I think I'm ready to get out. I'm ready, th I'm ready to call it quits because you have passion and you have no discipline. And what the Bible teaches us in the person of Simon Peter is that when you have passion and you lack discipline, you produce emotional responses. You become very impulsive. You respond to things quickly and suddenly because you're passionate. This is why somebody can say something about you and you're ready to type them 17 paragraphs telling them how you feel, where they can go, and when, when you see them, it's going to happen on site. This is why hap this is what happens when, when, when you break, when somebody breaks your heart, you, you immediately go to the internet and try to make it look like you ready to move on because you're passionate about it but you lack the discipline discipline will make you hold your tongue discipline will make you say nah I'm not ready yet I gotta sit down and get myself together discipline to say I need I need to get some healing I can't go into another relationship right now because the last relationship messed mess me up but when you're passionate about being in a relationship you'll go from one relationship to the next you'll go from one job to the next this is why some people can't keep a job because they don't have the discipline to make it work what you have to understand, and I'm going to my seat, is that passion will help you to get it started, but discipline will help you to finish. Passion will help you to get it started, but discipline will help you to get it finished. I'll never forget. I'll never forget when I was in graduate school, it was passion that brought me to that place. But it came a point along that journey when I started being tested in ways I had never been tested before. And if I could be 100 with you, there was 100% of me that said, nah, Mo, you don't got to do this. You can get you a good government job. You can make your money. You can work your way up. You don't got to sit here and take this. You don't got to deal with this mental hazing. You don't got to deal with it. Because my passion had faded. But the thing that kept 
me there was not passion. It was the discipline that had been grained in my head over elementary school, over middle school, over undergraduate studies. It was the discipline that had been developed. And because I had the discipline, I was able to not only start it, but I was also able to finish it. <laughs> passion, 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 passion will tell you, nah, nah, it's good, baby. You can stay tonight. We can do a little Netflix and chill. You know what I'm saying? Ain't nothing major. But discipline to tell you, girl, you better go home. Boy, you better get up out of here because something about to pop off. Nah, you don't need to spend the night right here. That's the difference between passion and discipline. Passion will have you eating Oreos and binge watching Netflix series the 4 a.m. in the morning. I know because I've been there in the middle of the pandemic and all I got as a result of it is now I can't wear some of my clothes because I was a passion about eating. I was passionate about binge watching Netflix. But discipline to tell you, boy, you better get up off that couch. Netflix gonna still be there. Get up, drink some water and go to bed. What I'm trying to help you to understand is in order for you to keep your guard up, in order for you to be alert, in order for you to be prayerful, you have to develop discipline. And if you don't have any discipline, then you are going to fall on your face. The moment that life throws something heavy at you, you're going to fall on your face. I know this may be a hard message, but this is a real message that I got to give to you because this is the way that he gave it to me and it helped me to get myself together in areas that I didn't need to know that I needed to get myself together in. That if you want to go further in life, if you want to go further in life, yeah, passion is good, but you will need some discipline to make it work. Somebody shout discipline. Somebody shout discipline. Somebody shout discipline. You need discipline. He says, Simon, man, you went to sleep on me. I gave you an assignment. I gave you a task. You can't even fulfill what it is that I give you to do, and I ain't even gone yet. How are you going to do it when I leave, Simon? You need the discipline to make it work. You need the discipline. The thing about discipline is it don't come overnight. Oh, sir. Oh. Something you got to work at. And maybe that's why our generation don't like the discipline because it takes a little work. It's going to make you work. You got to sweat a little bit. When I realized I couldn't fit some of my clothes anymore, I, I told my wife that I got to do something because I can't buy new clothes and I can't spend any money to get new suits tailored. What happened was at the beginning of the pandemic, we had purchased this, this workout and in the beginning, we were passionate about it. We were excited about it. Every day, we was up there. The kids was up there. We was getting it. Life started happening in between. Work became more demanding. Ministry became more demanding. Kids needed more attention. And time just got away. I was passionate, but when that passion faded, I found myself not doing the exercise. I was sitting on the couch binge watching Netflix series, wondering why was this in the top 10. Why was this the top 10 movie? But when I got to the moment that I couldn't fit some of my clothes, some of my favorite clothes, it made me realize, Mo, you was real passionate. That, in the beginning, that passion is gone. But you're going to have to do something about this. And so now, as of a few weeks ago, that passion has been reignited. And what has happened, the first week was cool. Week two came and I was like, nah, I'm into like somebody, you know, trying to kill me in the workout. I mean, I want the result, but you know what I'm saying? I don't want to have to do all of that. But what now keeps me going is the discipline and the foundation that has been built over the first two weeks. And so in order for you to keep going in that relationship with that family, with your career, with your friends, whatever you're trying to do, those dreams and visions that you got that's real cool and cute, you're going to need some discipline. And the only way to get that discipline is to be connected to the master teacher. Because one thing about Jesus is he's going to get you right. He's going to make sure you're right before you leave this earth. So you may be listening in this present moment. And you may be like, you know, God has given me an assignment and I kind of dropped the ball. You know, I kind of fumbled a little bit. I should have been awake, but I was really sleeping. This moment was curated just for you, for you to connect with the master teacher 
not only to reignite your passion, but to help you to develop the discipline to make it successful. If that's you, right there where you are, you can lift your hands. If that's you, you can drop it in the chat box. You can visit the website, whatever, wherever you are, whatever you need to do. But in this moment, God wants to help us to be disciplined. I don't know if you notice, but there are things that are happening around us. And life is not the same as it was a year ago. And so God is calling for us to, to, to be more aware, to be more alert, to be more prayerful. But in order to do that, we're going to need some discipline because there's real distractions out there. So if that's you today, you, you say, I, I don't really know him, but I, I want to know him. I want to know this master teacher, this master professor. I want to know him so that I can be disciplined. You can lift your hands. You can lift your hands. You, you can lift your hands where you are. We'll pray that prayer of salvation with you. You may say, you know, I was there at one point. I knew him. And like, like you said, man, life started happening. Things got crazy. Girls started tripping. Relationship fell apart. Lost my job. I mean, just it happens. Life happens. You know, you may be in that place right now, vulnerability. But that's a great place to be because God can help you to get back up. This moment is for you to, to reconnect to that personal trainer that can help you to develop the discipline to see the results that you're looking for. Because without the discipline, you're not gonna have results. Passion will get you likes, it will get you some followers, you know, will get you like some sponsorship or whatever, but the discipline is gonna help you to keep it. And so if you need to be connected or reconnected, this moment is for you. We wanna pray for you right there. And then you may say, man, I just need prayer, period. Like, like you said, Jesus had a big three and told them to keep watching pray. I need somebody to keep watching pray with me in this moment because life is going crazy right now. That's cool. It happens. Life happens, man. All of us who are here, who you see day in and day out, life is happening. But some of us, we're able to maneuver better because we have prayer. and We've been disciplined. So if that's you, we want to pray the prayer of salvation. Father, there, there are some who have gathered in this moment. They don't, they don't know you. They don't know you. They, they want to know you in this moment. They want to connect to you. And it's not off any spooky stuff, any scary stuff. They just want to know you so they can be better people. Father, in this moment, as, as they confess with their mouth and believe in their heart that you are the Lord who, who, who lived, who bled and died and then rose again with all power, Father, in this moment, we believe that they are saved. Father, there's someone who, who may have fallen by the wayside because life just got hard. They felt the weight of that assignment. They felt the pressure of being a mom, of being a dad, of being a student, of being what you've called them to be. There's some who have slacked on the assignment, who who stepped away from their post. But Father, today they're making the decision to, to step back in line to wake up from their sleep and be connected and reconnected to you. Father, in this moment, I ask that you will pour out portions of strength and wisdom to strengthen them for the journey that's ahead. Father, to those persons who are vulnerable, who, who are broken, who are tired, who are frustrated, who are dealing with anxiety and depression, because that's, that's real right now, God. Father, would you wrap your arms around them and then would you speak to their minds and let them know that, that, that they're going to make it through this, that they're going to get up from this place that they're in right now, and they're going to be able to carry out all that it is that you've promised them and spoken over their lives. Father, we thank you for this word. We thank you for this moment. We thank you for teaching us how to keep our guard up, teaching us how to stay aware and alert, teaching us how to be prayerful, but most of all, teaching us how to be disciplined. We thank you, we praise you, and we love you. And it's in Jesus' mighty name we do pray. Amen and amen. Amen.